Again, you're welcome to Deliverance Church International Umoja. We are glad that wherever you are, you're able to join us, especially those of you who are joining us online, joining us by television, and those who have come in person. We celebrate God with you, and we thank God for you. Now, those of you in the house, you are able, please just give the Lord a mighty hand clap offering. Let's just celebrate God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord in this house. I said, make a joyful noise to the Lord in this house. Bless his holy name. Glorify his holy name. Oh, hallelujah. I said again, hallelujah. Yes, you know we are a hallelujah church. We like to bless the name of the Lord. When I was a young Christian, we used to sing a song, hallelujah, anyhow. Whatever the enemy may bring, whatever the devil may do, there's one song I'll, I'll, I'll always sing. Hallelujah, anyhow. We are a hallelujah church. Therefore, when we say hallelujah, you just say amen. God bless you very, very much. We want to go to the word of God uh, this morning. We are still looking at our topic, the making of an ego, looking at the life of Peter, how God transformed Simon the Reed to a petrol, to Peter the petrol, the rock. And, uh, and he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. Let me just tell you very quickly, even before we make a confession. When I was young, this is what I believe. Listen, this one will bless you. I said, I know you have not sat down yet, but this one will bless you. This is what I believe, that the church of Christ, the church is building, is so powerful, so strong, that when it faces the devil, it is able to beat him, is able to defeat him, is able to overcome him, and you can chase that demon, the devil down the road. And if the devil runs and enters hell and closes the gates behind him, thinking he's safe, we are strong enough to kick in the gates of hell, go in there, beat him up, and still get out. That's what I believe in as a young Christian. That's what I'm talking about, where the egos dare. There are things that you've got to believe as an ego you are able to do. Come on, let's, let's do our confession. I, I don't want to preach when you're all standing because I know you, won't sit, you will not sit until I say so. So let's say together. I allow the word of God to illuminate and enlighten my path to the principles of his kingdom. I let go of past traditions and failures that I've held until today. I embrace God's principles, new revelation, and a new mindset. So help me God. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit in every aspect of my life to live victoriously through God's new covenant. And I'm an adversity to sin, to sickness, to poverty, and all the wiles of the enemy. I am established and I'm rooted in his purpose for my life, and I am transforming my generation. So help me, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And together we say, Amen. And again we say, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a mighty, mighty hand clap offering for keeping you, sustaining you, hallelujah, preserving you, protecting you. Come on, give him a hand clap offering as we sit down and look at our neighbor. Tell him, neighbor. Come on, look at another one. If you don't trust the one you, have, you looked at at this time, tell him, neighbor, my life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. I said amen. One, one more time, just as you are seated, give the Lord a hand clap offering. Bless the name of the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the Lord and just glorify him. Oh, hallelujah. I said again, hallelujah. We are still looking at the making of an ego. Are there something? I want to end up with this when the ego is taking off, when the ego is mounting. Somebody say amen. I want to believe that as we come to the end of this month of March, the, the month of open doors and open gates, you shall take off, you shall mount up because every snare shall be broken. Every cage that has held your life in, in, in place, all those cages, the doors and the gates shall be open. And child of God like Peter, you shall come out of a prison that Herod thought you shall never come out of. Because you are an ego. You are not supposed to be caged. No. Listen to me, friends. You are a Peter. They thought because they killed James, he thought he shall kill Peter. And you have, you have heard me tell you, friend, 
The devil sometimes thinks, because he got your brother, he shall get you. Just because he got your sister, he shall get you. He thinks that what killed your grandfather shall kill you. What he, does, what he never knew is that you shall come to this service. And as a part of this service, I bring a prophetic word over your life that in the name of Jesus Christ, he may put in gates, he may put you in the inner chamber, he may put you in between soldiers, but when the power of God is around you and you are an ego, oh hallelujah, say angels shall be sent on assignment. And listen, I don't even know where I'm going this direction yet, but listen what I'm going to say right now. There are some of you right now, angels have been sent on assignment and they are going to wake you up. They are going to lead you out. Listen, you are coming out of that situation because Peter walked out of a prison that Herod thought he shall never walk out of. Not only this time, even in the book of Acts, when he was put in jail with John, uh, earlier, he, they, they also walked out. The angel opened the door and told him, go out and continue talking about the words of this life. Testify about it. Listen to me, child of God. May God give you a testimony. I said, may God give you a testimony that you shall go out there and testify about the life of an ego because listen to what the Bible says. I'm in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 29. This is what the Bible says. Let's read together, church. What does it say? He gives power to the weak. And to those who have got no might, he increases strength. When Peter was lying between two soldiers and handcuffed to them, and the four prison gates were closed, God came, came and gave him power when he was weak. And those who have no might increase their strength. Listen to verse 30. It says, it says even the youths, shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait upon the Lord, now that you're in the house of God, now that you're connected to us by television, now that you're connected to us through the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook, whatever you are catching us, listen to me, friends, there's a renewal of strength that is coming your way shall renew their strength. And the Bible says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I keep on repeating, that shall be your story. I say again, that shall be your story. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, come on, look at your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, that shall be my story. The making of an ego. I showed you that when God is, wants to make an ego out of you, he begins by picking a fisherman and making him a fisher of men. He picks a simple person and he makes a hero, a champion out of that person because as far as God is concerned, listen to me, listen to me child of God, there's a champion in you that is wait, waiting to be made. Right now, what people see, they are seeing what your father and mother made out of you. But they have not seen what God shall make out of you. Listen to what I've said again. All that they have seen right now is what your father, your mother, your teachers, your, your, your atmosphere, your friends, whatever they have made out of you. But right now, that you are on the, you are on the potter's wheel, they are yet to see what the father what the love of God, what the Spirit of God shall make out of your life. And therefore, child of God, I've come here to encourage you. Stay the course. Stay on that potter's wheel. Pull the course. Don't run away because when God is through with you, you shall bring glory and honor to his name. The Bible says we shall be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ, so that Jesus Christ can become the firstborn of many brethren, so that when people, listen to what I'm saying right now, when people look at Jesus and then they look at you, the difference shall be the same. Ha <laughs> ha! Do you hear what I say? They say in the Swahili language, mtoto wa nyoka ni nini? Ni nyoka. Eh? Listen to what I'm going to say now. But that means the child of a snake looks like a snake. Someone said in the English language, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, looks like a duck, then it's a duck. And listen to what I'm going to say now. If you fly like an eagle, ah, you soar like an eagle, you mount up like an eagle, then you are an eagle. You are not a duck. You are not a chicken 
Somebody say amen. When God is through with you, they shall see you mount up. They shall see you soar. They shall see you travel. And they shall wonder what just happened here because God is in the business of breaking you so that he can make you. Yes, I told you about a man called Jacob. There's a point I just want to remind us here about Jacob in the book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 31. This is important. I want you to see when God finally broke Jacob and broke him even physically and literally. The Bible says, just as he crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him and he limped on his hip. This is the man called Jacob. When God was through with him, Jacob was limping. You know, Paul, Saul of Tarsus, got his sight back. But when it comes to Jacob, he limped for the rest of his life. In fact, if you read the rest of his story, he was limping on a staff all the rest of his life because he had been broken permanently. There was a permanent reminder in the life of Jacob that I've been on the wheel and the pot has worked on me. He has broken me and made me the way I am. But from that moment, he was no longer Jacob. He was Israel, a prince with God and with man. But he was limping physically. But I like what the Bible says there, that as he woke up from that place where he had dealt with God and he crossed over Penuel, the Bible says the sun rose on him. I got to meditate on that word, and God just blessed my heart with this and I just want to live to put it to you as, a, as part of the lesson we are learning today. Listen to the Bible, what I, I got to see in that verse that as he, the Bible says, as he crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him as he limped on his hip. In other words, when a man or a woman is coming out of a place of brokenness in the presence of God. God shall allow the sun to rise upon that person. There are some of you I'm talking to right now. The Lord has been dealing with you. And sometimes, listen to what I'm going to say now. The dealings of God with his people sometimes are severe. I know what I'm talking about. I know the things God has told me not to do. I know sometimes when I've tried to do them, how he has dealt with me. The dealings of God with his people sometimes are severe. But as David says in Psalm 51 verse 17, he says, hey, for a broken and a contrite spirit, the sacrifices of God are not, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, oh God, you shall not despise. You shall not ignore. God is looking for you to come to a place of brokenness. The dealings of God with David were so severe, and David knows what he's talking about. The dealings of God with Elijah were so severe, so Elijah knows what he was talking about. Listen, the dealings of God with a man that he, has, he was chosen to make an ego out of, they are so severe that the Bible says that this man Jacob was broken, but the Bible says the sun rose on him when a man or a woman is coming out of place out of a place of brokenness, God shall allow his son to rise over their lives. They may be limping, but the son of God is rising over them. Yes, they may be broken, but the son of God is rising over their lives. Their business may look at it's down, but the son of the living God is rising over their lives. What does that mean? For the son to rise over you. Oh, when the sun comes up, it means, number one, it means that the night is over and a new day has become. It means that weeping that endure for the night is now over, but a new day has come because joy comes in the morning. Listen to me, child of God. Yes, you may be limping as you come out of a place of brokenness. But listen, as the sun rises, it means your season of weeping and crying is over. You are entering a new season of celebration, a new season of praising God. I may be limping, but listen to me, friend. The sun is rising over my business, over my life, over my ministry, over my family. May the sun rise over your life as you come out of a, of a place of brokenness. The sun rose upon Jacob as he limped out of Penuel. And as the sun rise, 
It means, listen to what I'm going to say. One season is over. A season of darkness is over. There's a season of daylight. Why? Yo, I'm an African. And many times in Africa, when a person is not feeling well, oh, then they look at him in the evening. They begin to say, Oh, they, they begin start saying, we don't think even he shall reach the morning. But when they see sun, the sun rising and you are still alive, they thank God for a new day. I'm talking to somebody here. The devil is a liar. He thought that in the night, like Peter told all the night, I, they, they thought he shall die in the night. Listen to me, friend. I told you that when God is dealing with you, his intention is not to kill you. If God wanted to kill you, he would have done it by now. When God is dealing with you, oh, the sun shall rise over you. The sunrise means there's a new hope. I said there's a new hope. There's a chance of doing something fresh. There's a chance of doing something new. There's a chance of, you, of a fresh start in your life. And I'm, that's why I told you the other day, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Listen to me, friend. There's something fresh, something new that's about to start in your life. There's another chance that's coming to you. Pastor Matthew Shumolo says, when you wake up in the morning, remember one thing. Each one of us are given a deposit of 24 Hours. It's a new start. It's a fresh start. Fresh possibilities. I said fresh possibilities have been availed to you. The sun rose to this man who was physically broken, coming out of a place of brokenness, but God was giving him a fresh start, fresh possibilities, fresh beginnings. The sunrise, listen, it also means the season, the time of cold is over because the sunrise begin bring some warmth, warmth in your life. I'm talking to somebody here. The, the time of you to come out. <laughs> I don't know who I was sent to talk to. Are you there? I said, are you there? Or oh, you have been in the cold for a long time. You have been shivering for a long time. But time, the time has arrived for you to come out of the cold, to come out of shivering because the sun is rising. Your season of being in the cold is over. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, I told you, my life will never, ever be the same again because I'm coming out. Come on, tell them, I'm coming out of the cold, of darkness. No more shivering, no more shaking, no more darkness. Oh, hallelujah. I'm doing some spiritual warfare. Someone, come on, I said I'm doing some spiritual warfare with somebody here. You have been in the cold. You have been in darkness. You have been toiling in darkness. The sun is about to rise over you as you come out of a place of brokenness. May the sun rise and shine over your life. Shine over your business. Shine over your ministry. Shine over your family. Shine over the, everything, you, everything you lay your hand upon to do. May the sun shine upon it. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. By the sun shining upon it, it means darkness is over. Ooh. Darkness is over. The people sat in darkness have seen a great light. Listen to what the Bible says about the life of Jesus in the book of John, John chapter 1 verse 4. It says his life was the light of the world and that light shines in darkness and darkness cannot overcome that light. As the sun begins to shine, the darkness from witches, from wizards, Oh, I'm talking from magicians. Oh, I'm talking about the darkness that has been, been trying to come over your life right now. By the grace of God upon my life, by the anointing that I carry, I address every form of darkness that has been come, trying to come over your life. I address it right now and I rebuke that darkness and I say you are no longer a person of darkness. I'm no longer a person of darkness. I've turned from darkness to light. I've turned from God, from Satan to God. I've turned from defeat to victory. I've turned from being a victim to a victor. Time of darkness is over in the name of Jesus because the sun is shining over your life as you come out of, of a place of brokenness. 
Listen, there's one more thing. When the sun shines, it means there are no clouds in the sky. Ha! Oh, you didn't get what I said. When you see the sun shining, it means there are no clouds that cut off sunlight from humanity. And because clouds speak of rain, and when there are clouds, you'll find the weatherman says, today it's been a horrible weather. But when there's a sunshine, they say it's a fair weather. Today the, fair, the weather is great. Why? The sun is shining. Because when there are clouds, ah, they sh it shall be rainy, it shall be damp, it shall be cold, it will be, it shall be shivery. But you see the sun is shining, it means that every cloud. I've just prophesied. I've just prophesied. I said I've just prophesied. I've said every cloud that had been sent to come and cover you and cut off the light of God and cut off the warmth of God from your life. Every, cl every cloud right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say every cloud has been taken away. Because clouds come with rain, come with dampness, come with cold. But there's someone who sang a song when I was a young man. He used to say, I can see clearly now. Why? The rain is gone. I'm talking to somebody here. The rain that has been beating you. Oh. Urakazi kali mutuamu. Hey, ngatinyasai iwijo. I say the rain that has been beating you. The time of that rain is over. Why? The clouds of God. The sun is shining over your life. Receive the sunshine from above. May the sun of God shine over you. May every cloud be removed. May every cloud be dissipated right now in the name of Jesus so that the sun shall shine over your life. You talk to every farmer. I said, you talk to any farmer. When the rain has been there and then they see sunshine, they know one thing. Growth is possible. I said growth is possible. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. If you go to places which are very high altitude and you plant maize, it will take you about seven to eight months for that maize to mature. But you go to places where, yes, the, the rainfall is not so much, but it is warm. You plant maize, you'll discover you can eat that maize in three months. Why? Where there is heat, even animals reproduce. Where, because of the warmth of the sun, Plants grow faster. Animals reproduce more. There's fruitfulness and increase when there's, the sun is shining. I am praying for somebody here. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you go to Europe, what they call the winter crop, they put in the, the seed around October, November, before it freezes over. And they leave the seed in the ground over the winter months. Because when it is spring, and now it is March, and there's no more cold, the sun is beginning to shine, you'll find the, 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 the wheat, the wheat with its barley, it shall begin to grow so that by July, August, they are harvesting before the winter comes in again. Some of you have been like a seed that has been put in the ground for a season. I'm talking to someone, I've been, I was sent to, to reveal this to somebody. There's a seed of greatness. There's a seed of increase. There's a seed of growth that God has been put, had put in your life. It has been dormant in the year 2020. Come on, lift up your hand and say, my father... Say with you, my father, my father, my father. Every seed of greatness, of healing, of a miracle that you have sown in my life, now that the sun is shining, let it grow. Let it grow. When you see the sun shining, it guarantees you of a harvest. And I release, by the grace of God, let a, let a harvest Come into your life. I say, let a harvest come in your life. I say, let a harvest come in your life. Until you come to that place and you understand the next thing I taught you about the ego. There's something I taught you about the ego. After the ego has got her cheeks, she'll feed them until she knows these are now mature. But the cheeks are so happy, so comfortable to stay in the nest lined with feathers and all the leaves and feathers and the sticks are under until the mother ego comes and disturbs that nest. Why does she do that? She wants the egos to fly. I'm saying again, egos are not meant to stay in the nest. 
Eagles are meant to soar. Eagles are meant to mount up. Eagles are meant to fly. Woo. So when she comes and disturbs the nest, I told you, she takes her cheeks, puts them on her shoulders, and she takes off with them. And they are there. It is a very pleasant experience as they have this encounter with the mother raising, rising higher and higher and higher. What is she doing? She's exposing her children to her life. It's a life of mounting up. It's a life of soaring higher. It's a life of going to the heights. It's a life of going higher than any other living creature on planet Earth. Peter has a very interesting experience. In the book of Mark, chapter 9 from verse 1, there's a statement that Jesus makes that I want you to catch very quickly so you can get the point I'm trying to make here before I get out of your way. And he said to them, this, this, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Come on, let's read together, church. Let's read together. What does he say? And he said to them, we're reading with you, assuredly, I say to you, that there are some standing here who will not test death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. What the mother ego is doing is exposing his cheeks to the power <laughs> and the glory. Ah, I want to talk prophetically as a servant of God and as a prophet of God. Listen to what I'm going to say right now. Those of you are listening to me, whether you, if you are in East Africa, you are in Southern Africa, Central Africa, you are in Europe, whatever you are, this generation that you are coming up, I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall not just grow in the Word. You shall not just grow in listening to Scriptures. You shall not just grow with songs and music. You need an encounter with the power of God. I said you need an encounter with the power of the living God. That's what he gave to Isaiah. That's what he gave to Moses. As Moses is looking after the sheep of his father-in-law, Jephro, he turned around one day, Exodus chapter 3, and he saw a bush that was burning, but it was, not, it was not getting consumed. And he said, hey, being a learned man, he says, I want to move near and examine this phenomena. And God tells him, Moses, don't you dare move. Take off your shoes. You are now standing on holy ground. And Moses was getting an encounter with God. How come this bush is burning but it's not being consumed? He was coming face to face with the power of God so that, listen to me, friend, as the fire consumed this bush, God was recreating it again. In other words, God's recreation was faster than the fire could consume. He encountered God's power. Isaiah in chapter, chapter 6, he comes to a place where the heavens are open and he peeps in. He could see the glory of God. He sees God on his throne. He sees seraphims. He sees cherubims. He, see, he has praise and worship. The shaking. And he says, I'm undone. I am undone. You see, child of God, when those chicks are on the, on, the, on the wings of the mother, the experience as they are going high, it is, wow, it is like riding on a roller coaster. It's a, exhilarating, it is exciting, it brings joy, it brings wonder. And then as you reach to the peaks where the, these chicks have never been, and that's my prayer for you, that's my prayer for you. I pray that God shall give you an encounter with God pick you up himself and start taking you to places you have never been. Start, start raising you up, giving you a, a spiritual experience that you have never encountered in your life. I am praying right now. I said I'm praying right now because Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, after the things of God, for they shall be filled. I'm praying that God shall give you a thirst. God shall give you a hunger for the things of God to go deeper with God God and tell God, I want to go to places I've never been before. Seek my face, he says, and you shall find me. Don't just seek his hand. Don't just seek what God, what God can provide, what God can give you. No, seek his presence. Seek his face. Find him or spend time with him and let God give you an experience out of this world. 
I was 17 when I gave my life to Jesus, doing my O-levels. Then I did my A-levels, and I started serving God when I, I qualified to go and train for a professional course. I left it and came to serve God. Why? There is an experience I had with God on 3rd of February, 1971. There is an experience that God gave me that I've never forgotten. And out of that experience, I was on the floor for almost two hours. Oh, with the presence of God. At least that we, friends, I want to confess to you. I've had similar experiences again and again with the visitation of the Holy Spirit, with the voice of God speaking to my life. My brother, my sister, there's nothing like it. At first, it looks scary. But when you go through it, my brother, my sister, you cannot exchange anything with a moment in the presence of God having an encounter with him. Abraham had it. Jacob had it twice, three times. You need an encounter with God. That, that's what Jesus says. Hey, there are some of you listening to me. Hey, who are standing here who will, who will not test death till they see the kingdom of God present. Listen to this word. With power. Because he gives power. Power to the weak. And to those who have got no might, he increases strength. Oh, there's a power that God you can experience. The power of the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus told Peter, James, and John, before he went to heaven in the book of Luke, chapter 24, he told them, hey, hey, stay in Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem until you are, you are endued with the power from on high. Until the promise of the Father comes upon you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is a taste. I said, it's just a taste. It's just an earnest. It's just like a small deposit of what God is able to do in your life, oh child of God. I am praying you shall long, you shall hunger, you shall thirst for the infilling, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Because when it comes, it shall give you a taste of what it means to have an encounter with God. An ego exposes her children to her power and her glory. And this is what he's telling the children. The same power you see me manifest, the same power ah, is available to you. Somebody should have said amen. Somebody should have said amen. Oh, he's telling, she's telling her chicks, do you see how far I've taken you? You can go this far by yourselves. Get out of your nest. Get out of your comfort zone. This is how far you can rise. This is how far you can soar. This is how far you can mount up. Stop saying, stop staying in that nest again and again, opening your mouth for me to feed you. You can come up here yourself. You can hunt for yourself. That comes when it, the mother ego gives these chicks an encounter of height and speed. And you know what she does? She releases them. They get to that free fall. But in that free fall, they begin to discover our wings can work. Our feathers can work. We can also fly. They are higher than they were before. They are not where they used to be before. I'm prophesying to somebody here. As we come out of a place of brokenness, then God is now ready to start showing us his power. To start, am I in the right church? I said, am I talking to the right people? Am I talking to the right church? When we come out of a place of brokenness, now we are ready. I said we are ready to start experiencing the power of God. Oh, the encounter with God. Something that we shall never, even if everybody else backslides, you will remain standing. Because you will say, what I've seen in God personally. You will say like Paul, for I know whom I've believed. Why? Because of the encounter counter he had on the road to Damascus. He said, for I know whom I believed. And why? I am persuaded that he is able. Ah, murakazi kalibabosai. You come to a place whereby you yourself, you can tell the world, devil, you can do what you can do. You, it doesn't matter what you do to me, you ought to do to my life. It doesn't matter. That's why where Job was, he said, hey, I know my redeemer lives. Even though he slays me, yet shall I praise him because I know I shall live in the land of, I shall see his power in the land of the living. Come to that place where in this earth, before you test death, 
you shall see the power of God, the kingdom of God coming in its power in your life. She lets them come down. Oh, but the Bible says, as they are falling free, oh, she's watching over them because God has said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And there's a place where it says, and underneath, underneath, there are always everlasting arms. That's what the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 26, 27. Get this. Come on, you need, you need to read. I, I need to show you this. Read together what it says. There's no one like the God of Jeshurun. Who rides, listen, what does he do? He rides the heavens to help you. So when they're in free fall, he's riding, he's watching, he's riding the heavens to help you. And in his excellency, on the clouds, look at the following verse. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Underneath are the So we'll come swooping down and they, they'll discover before they are tired the mother has picked them again because he's in the clouds he's watching them, he's ruling the clouds and the God we serve there's no one like our God he's watching you, he's watching over your life as you go through that experience he'll always be there to carry you again higher and higher and lift you up, listen to me friends he has got encounters and encounters in him that you need to experience Especially this generation. I am praying that the same thing, I am saying the same thing that touched me and my generation in the 70s shall touch your generation. The same power, the same encounters that we had, we shall have. You shall have the same, my children, my grandchildren. May God give you an encounter. Open yourself to a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Tarry and wait on him. The Lord says, they that wait upon the Lord, don't you be in a hurry to get out of his presence. Say, Lord, I'll stay here until I encounter your grace. I encounter your power. I have an encounter with you. Lord, I want to go higher with you. If you choose to go farther with God, God shall do stuff with you that he has not done with anybody else. Mary, the other ladies, Peter, all of them went to the tomb in the morning. Everybody saw the, the tomb was empty, but they left. But the Bible says, but Mary bowed down again. She bent down a second time and looked inside. And she saw something that Peter had not seen. She saw an angel. And the angel talked to her. When she turned around, she met Jesus. You choose to go farther than everybody else, and God shall take you higher than everybody else has gone. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 9, what the Bible, what Jesus meant. Come on, pick it up there. And he said to the, I'm in mean, verse 2, 3, 4, come on, go ahead. And after six days, Jesus took Peter. His name comes up again. Jesus took Peter, James and John, the other he goes with him, and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves and was transfigured before them. He looked for these three and he said, these ones are seeking me more. These ones want to go deeper. He's looking for men and women who are saying, Lord, I, I'm not just happy to be a Sunday Christian. I'm, I'm not, I know there are some who are saying, I'm happy just to be a couch Christian. I'll not go back to the house of God. No, listen, there, there's something that God does with the people who are ready to go farther with him, who are, who are more hungry with him, who are long for him some more. I am praying, make the hunger of God, may, may the thirst of the things of God eh, fill your heart right now so that you can say like a deer, punch for the water. So my soul longs after you. Because as you come out with that kind of attitude, God shall look for you. He takes Peter, James and John, and the boy says, what does he do? He leads them up on a high mountain, a part by themselves. What does he do? And he's transfigured before them. Look at the next sentence. Eh? His clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. My God, what an encounter. What I wish I was there on that mountain. Murakaz, I is. You would have thought you have died and gone to heaven. Look, look at the Bible says, and Elijah appeared to them and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. These were prophets from the Old Testament. Elijah went, went home with a chariot of fire. And Moses, whom we talked about after he became an eagle, those two eagles that nobody buried. They were not buried by any person. God took them home. Polo Piach, heaven direct. My God. 
That can be a story. That can be a story. Listen to what he says. Peter is shocked. Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Why? They wanted to be watchmen in this experience. They were so happy. Now, have you ever had someone say, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord? This is a place you can reach with God. You'll say, God, I don't even to get there. I want just to be. Because it is, even to be out here, it's a privilege. Even to be just outside that tabernacle, it's a blessing. Even to be out here, I've gone to places like Paul says, I was able to get up to the third heaven and I saw and I heard things that are unlawful for a man to utter. God can give you those experiences when you are still here. They're not reserved for when you die. No, I know there are some stuff we shall not know until we go on the other side. But listen, there are men that just says there are people who shall not test death until they see the kingdom of God and its power. No wonder Psalm 24, verse 3, this already says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in this holy place? That's a question. A very important question you need to start answering. He takes Peter, James, and John and takes them on a high mountain. God wants to take you on a high. You, an encounter with God gives you a high. Leave, leave, leave this high that comes of these substances that people abuse. This is a high that comes that God can take you on a high mountain. And the question is, who will ascend to the hill of the Lord? Oh, and who may stand in his holy place? You can. Listen, I want to tell you something. God has no favorites. God has only acquaintances. And today I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Come out of the outer circle. Come into the inner circle of Jesus Christ. You see, he had a crowd that he fed with fish, 5,000. He had the 500 who saw him ascend to heaven. There's the 120 that were there on the day of, Pe day of Pentecost. There's the 70 that he sent out to go and witness in Luke chapter 10. And then there's the 12 apostles of Jesus. Then there's the three. Listen, if I were you, ah, and, and I am me, let us long to join Peter, James, and John so that we can ascend Ah, the heel of the Lord, that we can stand in his holy place. He can give us an experience that none of the other people had experienced. Listen, I have nothing against your brother. I have nothing against your sister other than they are not here. They are not connected. They are not listening to me. But if you are listening to me, listen to me, friends. God is ready. I said God is ready to give you an experience, to give you an encounter, to lift you up, to take you on a high mountain. 2021, I said 20. 21 is your year of soaring or mounting up, going higher than everybody else. Peter, James, and John went higher than all the other 12 apostles. They went to the mountain of the Lord. They stood in the holy place of God. They saw saints of old together with Jesus. Oh, Christ was telling them, hey, when you believe in me, you shall never die. You may transition, but you know what? You, you are still as, as much alive as you are right now. You have just moved from this side of life to the other side of life. This is Moses. This is Elijah. I've just transfigured. Join them in the state they are in, and we are chatting with them because they are still alive. Child of God! When a Christian leaves this world, they transition from this life to another life. And he was giving them an assurance of eternal life. It is there. I am the author of that eternal life. And you can see, I've preserved Elijah. I've preserved Moses. And I'm with them. And yet, I'm still with you. Listen, God is ready to give you an encounter. Who is that who's ready for that encounter? God has no favorites. God has only acquaintances. Look at the book of Matthew. Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. This one, this one shall, shall blow your mind. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, and from verse 21. Look, come on, let's read this with you as I close this message. Listen, what does it say? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of... In other words, not everybody shall experience what I'm talking about. But you are the one. If you are, tell them, neighbor, I told you, my life will never ever be the same again because I'm one of those Christ said, some of you shall not taste death until you experience the kingdom of God and its power. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall experience what I'm talking about. 
but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Listen to these words. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? Done many wonders in your name? And then I'll declare to them, listen to those words, I never knew you. God has no favorites, only acquaintances. Does he know you? He says, I never. Yes, you cast out devils. Yes, you heal the sick. Yes, you preached in my name. Yes, you did this and that in my name. But I never knew you. I am praying God shall know you. Because if he knows you, this is what he says, depart from me, you practice lawlessness. I'm back in Psalm 24. He says in verse 3, what is the question there in verse 3? Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He has got an answer in the following verse. He who has got clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Because that is the blessing that God gives those who are his acquaintances. Then he look at the way he closes. When you are coming out of a place of brokenness and a place of encounter with God, now you are coming with fresh authority to look at every gate and look at every door that has been closed to you. And that's what we are doing as we stand together. Come on, everybody stand with me because we want to take authority right now. We are coming out of a place of brokenness. The sun is shining over our lives. We are coming to out, of a, out of a place of an encounter with God. When you come out of that place, you have got a certain authority that, that some demons cannot, cannot stand before you. When Jesus came down. He was able to address demons and overcome the ones that nobody else could handle. He could handle them. Listen to me, child of God. I declare over your life right now that no demon. I said no demon. No sickness. Come on, say with me. No demon. Say again, no sickness. Say again, no demon shall be able to stand before me in the name of Jesus when you come from the, out of that place. Now let's address these gates. What does it say? Lift up your head. I didn't say you whisper. I did not say you whisper. Say with me, three, four, lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lifted up. You have everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. There are some doors that are rusty because they have been locked and closed for a long time to you. The chains are rusted. The locks are rusted. Even the key cannot go in. They did not know you shall come to this service. Right now, I want me and you to take authority, to take authority over those doors that have been closed. They were, your father could not open them. Your grandfather could not. Listen to what I said. Your father could not open them. Your grandfather could not open them. They were closed to your brothers. They have been closed to your sisters. But now that you are here, we are, join your faith with me. We are coming from a place of brokenness. We are coming from a place of an encounter with God. And we are looking at those gates. Let's say together, hey, Lift up your heads, all you gates. Be lifted, you have everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. We are coming now because the king of glory is our captain. I'm in the company of the king of glory. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the God of all power. He's the God Sabaoth. He's a man of war. He has never lost a battle. That door must open. Those chains must fall. Those locks, however rusted, they must fall off because the king of glory must come in and I'm walking. If I were you, I'll take a step. I'm walking right behind the king of glory. Where he enters, I shall enter. What opens for him shall open for me. What fears him shall fear me. What falls before him shall fall before me. What cannot touch the king of glory cannot touch me. Why? Because I'm in the company of the king of glory who has said I shall never leave you nor forsake you. Look at the next verse. How does he describe the king of glory? It says this king of glory is the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Look at verse 10 as they describe this king of glory. Verse 10, what does it say? Verse 10, he says, hey, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. He's not coming alone. 
is coming with a host of angels. That's why I believe those everlasting doors are coming down. You are an ego. You shall go where only the egos dare. What your father could not penetrate, what your grandfather could not enter, what your mother could not enter, what your sisters cannot enter. Child of God, connect with this anointing. I said you connect with this anointing. And those doors, those gates shall be lifted. In Jesus' name, see you next Sunday as we look on the fourth part of the making of an ego. God bless you.